Basel 1, Basel 2 and emerging markets. We all know that the Basel Accords are some of the most influential and misunderstood agreements in modern international finance. In this lesson, we will discuss Basel Committee, explain Basel 1 and describe Basel 2. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain Basel Committee, discuss Basel 1, understand the criticism of Accord, Describe Basel 2. Explain Pillar 1, Pillar 2 and Pillar 3. The Basel Committee on Banking Supervision is an institution created by the central bank governors of the Group of Ten Nations. It was created in 1974 and meets regularly four times a year. The Basel Committee on Banking Supervision provides a forum for regular cooperation on banking supervisory matters. Its objective is to enhance understanding of key supervisory issues and improve the quality of banking supervision worldwide. It seeks to do so by exchanging information on national supervisory issues, approaches and techniques with a view to promoting common understanding. Basel 1 and Basel 2 are both products of Basel Committee. The first Basel Accord, Basel 1, was completed in 1988 to set minimum capital standards for banks and these standards focused on credit risk, the main risk incurred by banks. This became effective end year 1992. Now why Accord Basel 1? Because to create a level playing field for internationally active banks and banks from different countries competing for the same loans would have to set aside roughly the same amount of capital on loans. 1998 capital requirement is that capital was set at 8% and was adjusted by loans credit risk weight. Credit risk was divided into five categories 0%, 10%, 20%, 50% and 100% and commercial loans for example were assigned to the 100% risk weight category. The accord was hailed for incorporating risk into the calculation of capital requirements. To calculate required capital a bank would multiply the assets in each risk category by the category's risk weight and then multiply the result by 8%. Thus a dollar 100 commercial loan would be multiplied by 100% and then by 8% resulting in a capital requirement of $8. The Accord, however, was criticized for taking too simplistic an approach to setting credit risk weights and for ignoring other types of risk. Risk weights were based on what the parties to the Accord negotiated rather than on the actual risk of each asset. Risk weights did not flow from any particular insolvency probability standard and were, for the most part, arbitrary. The requirements did not explicitly account for operating and other forms of risk that may also have been important. Except for trading account activities, the capital standards did not account for hedging, diversification and differences in risk management techniques. Advances in technology and finance allowed banks to develop their own capital allocation, internal models in the 1990s. This resulted in more accurate calculations of bank capital than possible under Basel I. These models allowed banks to align the amount of risk they undertook on a loan with the overall goals of the bank. For instance, it may appear to be good business to originate risky loans with the accompanying high interest rates. However, if the internal models calculate that these loans default more and thus need more capital charged against them, the loans may not be as profitable as lower risk, lower earning loans that require far less capital. Banks discovered a wide variation in credit quality within risk weight categories. Basel 1 lumps all commercial loans into the 8% capital category 
and internal model calculations can lead to capital allocations on commercial loans that vary from 1% to 30% depending on the loan's estimated risk. If a loan is calculated to have an internal capital charge that is low compared to the 8% standard, the bank has a strong incentive to undertake regulatory capital arbitrage. Securitization is the main means used by the U.S. banks to engage in regulatory capital arbitrage. By the late 1990s, growth in the use of regulatory capital arbitrage led by the Basel Committee to begin work on a new capital regime that is Basel II. The effort focused on using banks' internal rating models and internal risk models. In June 1999, committee issued a proposal for a new capital adequacy framework to replace the 1998 accord. Basel II consists of three pillars minimum capital requirements, supervisory review and effective use of market discipline. It treats exposures very unequally depending on the exposure characteristics and also treat banks very unequally depending on sophistication of risk management systems. Basel II consists of three pillars. First is a minimum capital requirement for credit risk, market risk and operational risk expanding the 1988 Accord Pillar 1. First pillar is based on market, credit and operational risk to reduce risk of failure by cautioning against losses and provide continuing access to financial markets to meet liquidity needs and provide incentives for prudent risk management. Second is supervisory review of an institution's capital adequacy and internal assessment process. Pillar 2. In Pillar 2, qualitative supervision by regulators of internal bank risk control and capital assessment process including supervisory power to require banks to hold more capital than required under the first pillar. Third pillar is effective use of market discipline as a lever to strengthen disclosure and encourage safe and sound banking practices. Pillar 3. New public disclosure requirements to compel improved bank risk management. In the United States, all banks will be required to conform to the new capital standard, will use the Advanced Internal Ratings Based Approach AIRB. Advanced internal ratings-based approach requirements are to collect sufficient data on loans to develop a method for rating loans within various portfolios. Develop a probability of default PD, for each rated loan and develop a loss given default LGD for each loan. If the bank's own internal calculations show that they have extremely risky loss-prone loans that generate high internal capital charges, their formal risk-based capital charges should also be high. Likewise, lower risk loans should carry lower risk-based capital charges. Banks have many different asset classes, each of which may require different treatment. And each asset class needs to be defined and the approach to each exposure determined. Minimum standards must be established for rating system design, including testing and documentation requirements and the proposals must be tested in the real world. To determine if the proposed rules are likely to yield reasonable risk-based capital requirements within and between countries for banks with similar portfolios, four quantitative impact studies QIS, have been undertaken. Operational risk covers the risk of loss due to system breakdowns, employee fraud or misconduct, errors in models or natural or man-made catastrophe, among others. Operational risk events can be quite expensive. Citibank and JP Morgan Chase suffered large losses from Enron and MCI. The Royal Bank of Scotland took a very large fraud loss at their American subsidiary All First Financial. In supervisory review requires supervisors to review a bank's capital adequacy assessment process which may indicate a higher capital requirement than pillar 1 minimums. 
the United States is currently in the forefront of disclosure of financial data SEC disclosure requirements for publicly traded banks bank regulators required quarterly filing of call reports for all banks US authorities are currently considering what banks should publicly disclose about their Basel II calculations now let's see how much you have learned till now state whether the following statements are true or false Basel II introduced to exploit and improve bank risk management systems true in 2008 IRB capital requirements for credit risk operational risk and market risk may not fall below 90 percent of the current minimum required for credit and market risks true after 2010 IRB capital requirements for credit risk, operational risk and market risk may not fall below 80% of the current minimum required for credit and market risk. False Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Basel Committee it is a group of 11 nations that, after the messy 1974 liquidation of the Cologne-based bank Hustat, decided to form a cooperative council to harmonize banking standards and regulations within and between all member states. Basel I was created to promote the harmonization of regulatory and capital adequacy standards only within the member states of the Basel Committee. The first internal ratings based approach is known as the Foundation IRB. In this approach, banks with the approval of regulators can develop probability of default models that provide in-house risk weightings for their loan books. Basel II, on the other hand, seeks to extend the breadth and precision of Basel I, bringing in factors such as market and operational risk market-based discipline and surveillance and regulatory mandates.